All right, guys, today we're at CB Built. We're getting gears and lockers. So 488s, an Airb twin air lockers front and back. If you haven't heard of CB Built, check them out. Let's go inside and see what's up. So if you guys hear me saying stuff like we're getting gears and 488s and you don't understand what I'm talking about, this video is for you. When you put upgraded tires on your vehicle that are larger than stock, what do you think that does to the drivetrain? It's like riding your bike up a hill and all of a sudden the tire size jumps 15%. What do you think that would do to your ability to bike uphill? It would make it more difficult, right? Well, the same thing happens with your vehicle. How do you think your precious Lexus GX470 or other rig feels when you bolt a thousand pounds of weight to it, put bigger tires on, and expect it to go uphill like it's no problem. It doesn't appreciate it very much. Now, fortunately, you have a low range transfer case that will help things a little bit, but wouldn't it be great to have that increased tire size and the performance and traction that comes with that and be able to have a stock crawl speed? That's what changing the gear ratio in your Lexus GX470 or other rig will do for you. Now for context, on a stock vehicle in low range at about 1500 RPM in first gear, your crawl speed is four miles an hour. If you do nothing other than change to 35 inch tires, that number goes up by over half a mile an hour. Now that might not seem like much, but the lower the crawl speed, the more control you have over your vehicle in off-road situations. With that in mind, ask yourself what would be even better than getting back to the stock ratio? And my answer to that would be going beyond the stock ratio so that you can get an even lower crawl speed. To account for the excess weight I've put on the vehicle and the increased leverage on the drivetrain that comes from upgrading to larger tires. Now your OEM final drive gear ratio is 3.73 to one. That means that it requires 3.73 turns of the drive shaft to turn your hubs and by extension your wheels and tires one time. So the drive shaft spins 3.73 times, your tires spin one time around. The most common gear ratios available for the Toyota platforms are 488, 456, and 410 gears. The higher the number, the more the drive shaft needs to spin in order to rotate the tires one time. So just like riding a bicycle, if you're going at a constant rate, and you downshift from second gear down to first gear, your pedals are gonna move faster, but the tires will spin the same rate, which is what you want in an off-road context. Now, you need to balance this with on-road performance that you prefer. Let's consider these gear ratios as a change in percentage from stock. This is different than just calculating the percentage difference between the two values since we have a starting point that is 373. So with that in mind, let's calculate the change in percentage for all these optional gear ratios. 488s are about 30% shorter than stock. 456s are about 22% shorter than stock. And 410s are about 10% shorter than stock. Does that mean that since I went with 488s that I'm gonna have a 30% shorter final drive gear ratio? No, because I still have to factor in the increase in percentage in tire size increase that I've gone with. Stock tire diameter for the Lexus GX470 is about 30.6 inches. The Milestar Patagonia 315-70 R17 tires that I've added to the rig are about 34.7 inches in diameter. That means we have a percentage increase of about 13.4%. And when we subtract that value from our previous 30% number, we get about 16.6% shorter than stock. So theoretically, I'm going to have a 16.6% gearing advantage over stock, which is great because I have a bunch of extra weight on the rig and that will help me stay in overdrive when going up hills and on days where I have a headwind because the vehicle is much taller and has has a lot more wind resistance. All that sort of stuff would cause a taller geared vehicle to want to downshift out of overdrive to get that gearing advantage back. Of course, you could probably get the same advantage with 456 gears while keeping the overdrive RPMs a bit lower. So why did I choose to go with 488s? And it comes down to priorities. I barely ever drive because I work from home. So I'm sacrificing a bit of that on-road performance to gain that shorter crawl ratio when off-roading. I have the luxury of doing that. And other people with different priorities and different situations may want to go with a different gear ratio more suited to their daily drive, which is totally understandable. Here's what I know for sure. When you upgrade to larger tires, you are making a lot of compromises, including increased drivetrain wear, 
an increased probability of breaking stuff off road because you can't control wheel speed as well, sluggish acceleration on road, gear hunting, going in and out of overdrive because your vehicle's transmission control unit can't decide what gear to put you in because it doesn't recognize the tire size, poor gas mileage, and increased rolling resistance that come with that decision. Of course, you do get the benefits of increased ground clearance, more sidewall area to help out the suspension when aired down off road, increased traction, better looks, things like that. What a regear allows you to do is get all the benefits of running larger tires while minimizing the compromises you need to make in order to run them. Let's talk about how I decided on which ratio I'm going to go with. I use the Grim Jeeper gear calculator, which I'm going to link here. So you can just copy my numbers over. This is for the ASIN A750F transmission. On the left-hand column, we have the stock vehicle. Everything is the stock running gear, all that stuff with a 373 axle gear ratio and like we talked about the 30.6 inch diameter tire size now we saw this before a little bit too with our 4.05 mile an hour crawl ratio at 1500 rpm let's keep that in mind for later and then the road speed at 2000 rpm and fifth gear is about 68 and further down we have some more common uh, speeds so at 45 you're looking at 1300 rpm and 75 at 2200 RPM in overdrive gear. Now let's go to the modified column. Everything on the top will be the exact same as the stock side, except for when we get down to the axle gear ratio, which is our final drive. 373 meet 488. Now again, the tire size is about 34.7 inches on my tires. And let's look at the crawl ratio. We are down half a mile per hour from 4.05 to 3.51. So not only did I bring it down to stock, but I even exceeded it and went to a shorter crawl ratio than with 30.6 inch tires. Here are some more common speeds at 2000 RPM in fifth gear, you're looking at about 60 miles an hour. So a nine mile an hour difference at 2000 RPM, which again, I am compensating for with all that extra weight and wind resistance coming from a modified Lexus GX470. Here are some more common speed, 75, you're looking at about 2,500 RPM and 1,500 for 45. And compare that again to the stock tire size and gearing. Now let's hear my thoughts as I drive to CB Built on 35 inch tires and stock gear ratios. I mean, even in fourth gear going at like normal speeds like 45 ish it's just pinned at 1100 rpm like if i accelerate at all it's going to have to downshift like there's no chance for me to just you know stay in fourth and get a little bit of acceleration and get a quick pass in over a slow truck it's always gonna it's gonna have to gear hunt a little bit that's what's kind of been annoying about the whole thing not nearly as bad as i thought however i mean it you can tell uh it's it's really struggling on these tires looking forward to having slightly shorter than stock gears so that maybe the transmission control unit can behave more like a stock vehicle uh, with all this extra weight Guys, I love the interior here. It's awesome. Let's get a shot from a starting from zero here when the light turns. Goes, there we go. All right, first gear. Really got to take advantage of first gear. <laughs> and then there's second. All right, on the freeway, normal freeway speed of about 60. And we're at like 1500 RPM, guys. So imagine trying to go up a hill like this, not gonna happen. All right, guys, we're picking her up. Let's go inside. As we are all paid up, let's see how she drives. I should probably unlock it first, though. Oh, they cleaned it a little bit. That is super nice. Brand new CVs, boys. I know some of you are <laughs> saying some stuff about my CVs being all gross. These are looking super minty fresh. 
then they put in brand new differential mount which I'm gonna talk about a little later millipede here all right so I've heard that it can like when you put the car in low it has a little more you have to put a little more brake on it so let's see if we have the same thing oh yeah it definitely pushed through the brakes so here is the break-in procedure i'm just gonna go slow so i don't overheat it and cause any problems i actually have a stock gx my wife's car to compare to and already it feels the exact same it feels just like her car Man, I'm stoked. <laughs> oh man, the transmission feels so like, I don't know, maybe I just have way too much mechanical sympathy or whatever, but man, she feels happy as can be. First gear, second gear. Guys, it feels just like stock. This is awesome. I'm gonna keep driving and see if I have any more thoughts. Guys, I am not noticing any real difference in gear whine noise pretty much at all. I don't know, maybe I had noisy stock gears, but I could definitely hear the running gear. Right now, pretty much the exact same. So no issues with these nitro gears uh, in terms of noise. Everything has been awesome on the drive home. I've kept it slow. Definitely noticed that the RPMs creep closer to 2000 uh, as I get closer to 60. And that's fine with me because that just means I get to stay in overdrive for longer and I'll just drive a little slower, you know, max 75. You could definitely go 80 if you want. It'll just be at around 25, 2600 RPM. Not a real huge deal in my opinion. This is awesome, guys. Super, super stoked on this so far. Coming to a brief stop here. Let's go through the gears. Here's first, second, third, fourth already. I'm only going 30. Overdrive at 40 something miles an hour guys that is really good sign for me so guys let me know your thoughts on whether you think you need a re-gear on your vehicle based on the information i shared if i forgot anything leave them in the comments down below and if you enjoyed this video please hit the like button go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already and we'll see you in the next video